<laughs> because of one of my Facebook friends, Jason Trumpled, I bought this King Kong 188 quadcopter frame. Now this is not a standard carbon fiber frame, but it's a mostly injected plastic, which means it wasn't printed, it was just made this way. This is what the box looks like. And it's kind of cool that it comes in a box because a lot of the stuff that I end up getting usually comes in a uh, <laughs> anti-static bag or something. This says it weighs 67.8 grams. So we'll see how that actually comes out. Anyway, let's take a look at this, what comes in the package. Now, I bought the black one, but it's also available in uh, green and red. And it's kind of cool, it comes with propellers, three going both directions. And these have these extra holes on the side, and I'm not sure if, uh, what those are actually for, unless you're just screwing them directly to your, directly to your motors instead of using the um, shaft adapters, I guess. It's kind of interesting. That's the first I've seen. Here's the main part of the frame, and I'm looking at this for the first time. I haven't even opened this package yet. Well, yeah, it looks like it is injected plastic. And these arms are kind of thick. They're kind of uh, uh, not straight, I guess. They're kind of angled here. You can kind of see a little better there. It's kind of angled, and it probably has all this stuff in here just to help with the rigidity of the uh, frame. Let's see if it'll bend at all. Well, it bends a little bit, but I'm putting a lot of pressure on it. Let's see this middle. Yeah, the middle's not bending. There's too much too much meat inside here for it to bend too much that way. But I think it has... Uh, the arms give a little bit. That's not too bad, though. I think it has some cool things that are supposed to attach onto the back plate here. Anyway, oh, also comes with directions. <laughs> That's good because uh, sometimes these are a little bit more difficult. This one doesn't look too bad to put together. But you know, I'll get it put together and we'll see what it actually looks like. Before I get started on the build, I thought I'd show you some of these things. It comes with a power distribution board, which makes you know wiring a lot easier. And here it has this voltage reducer that's soldered on that reduces it down to uh, 5 volts. And um, if you look in the directions on the other side, it actually tells you here how you're supposed to hook it up to your uh, video transmitter. And that's if you want to run 5 volts on it. It also tells you that these uh, two sets of pins are also outputting 5 volts right there and right here, which are on this board as well. And then up here in the front, this is where you're supposed to connect your camera up to this, and it can also feed out 5 volts to your camera. So it's kind of nice because you don't have the camera wires running through the middle of your quadcopter on this. And also it has the connection points on here also for your uh, ESCs, you know, here on these four parts and it also has a battery connector where it looks like you can just connect it into either one of those places that you want so they don't expect you to be running this out the um, out the battery connector out the side or out the back I mean it looks like it's going to come out one of the sides uh, anyway besides that it also has this little piece up here that goes up in the front to help protect your camera a little bit it has this little uh, thing that goes on the back and this is probably for mounting your video transmitter or something I'll figure it out and then it has the, the main plate so the spacers for that and I think those are to help mount your camera and of course has the screws here's the top plate one thing that's kind of weird about this is it has this pole right in the middle and I thought surely that can't be right but it's actually on the picture there it is right there in the middle mm, a little bit odd to me but we'll see anyway this top plate has a lot of flex in it and I guess that's okay. I guess I'd rather have the top plate flex than break. So, I don't know. We'll see how this goes. So here's the frame mostly assembled and it came with two camera mounts. This one here sits at an angle and if you use this one with the two bumps on the top then it will sit in there straight up and down. That one only has one bump on the top and the bottom. Back here on the back is the tail light with a little plastic cover over it and with those things light up this whole thing's going to light up like a Christmas tree and it should be very easy to see. The uh, power wire comes out the bottom and then goes back into the frame here and it needs a 5 volt power source which is what this is according to the directions so this should be good for 5 volts to get it to the uh, LEDs. So the holes in the arms are cut for 1306 motors or 1806 motors and what they, the idea is that you would run the wire coming toward the quadcopter body and you drop it down through this hole. Your ESCs are going to have to sit up here and then feed the wire in through here to connect up to your power distribution board. Now, I don't know 
I guess they just want you to zip tie it up here at these holes. I guess that would be okay. But then if that's the case, why have the crevice go all the way back here? There's not enough room inside here that I can see anyway that I, I don't think you could fit two ESCs up here in the front and two more back here in the back. I don't just don't think there's enough room. But anyway, so if you ran your ESCs here, you could zip tie them on. And then the tricky part's gonna be soldering those ESCs onto your power distribution board because it's gonna sit like this. And so you're gonna mash those wires up inside there. I mean, mash in a good sense of the word. You're gonna want those uh, wires up inside of there. I think the better thing to do would be to make these solder connections first to your ESCs and then solder your motor wires to your ESCs second, that way, you don't have to worry about making these too long and having them stretch, you know, having to wrap them up inside here or anything. And like I said, here's where the battery connection goes right here on this part, and it can slip out the side there. And it's, that's the only place it can really go because over on this side, here's the battery lead here, and it feeds into nowhere. <laughs> so you kind of have to have your battery connection coming in on this side over here, which is okay, I guess. But uh, all, the nice thing about having your camera wires in here is that they could drop down through these any of these holes back here and then come out the bottom and solder into the uh, battery leads on here for the camera and on to the, and then the same thing is true for the back here. They could drop down through these holes in the bottom plate and solder up to the power distribution board just fine and it should be pretty slick having it all enclosed. You still have access to all these and I don't know why they put these out here the uh, little solder points, I guess, just in case you, I don't know, want to solder it out there for some reason, but then you'd almost be landing on it. They're all on the inside too, so I guess as long as you start with the inside and then work to the outside, then your ESC wire should be fine and all your uh, electrical connections should be okay too. So now that it's assembled and I have the power distribution board screwed into place, I'm going to go ahead and get some measurements off of this. They said it's a 188, so if I measure from arm to arm, center of arm, or center of the motor to the center of the motor, and it should come up to be, hey, you can barely see it, about 188. So they actually measured this correctly and advertised it correctly. That is amazing. Okay, now this is the fully assembled quadcopter, so there's not much uh, else to add to this other than your electrical component components. So let's go ahead and weigh it and see how it comes in. 75.2 the uh, box said 67.8 so it's a little bit heavier but that's probably because it didn't include the strap or who knows what but anyway a little bit heavier than what the box said as for the amount of space between these upper plates you have about let's see about right there 25 millimeters of space between those upper plates and uh, you're not really going to have too much actually installed up here in this upper area. You might have your video transmitter, your camera, and your flight board. If you get a little mini or a nano CC3D or mini NAS32, you can actually put it down inside there and it shouldn't be uh, too hard to fit it in there. You're, you, all, you will be doing some direct soldering to the board itself. But if you look close, there's no uh, mounting uh, holes up here to mount a board in the upper plate. So it's it's assumed, I would just guess, that you're supposed to put the uh, flight board inside the um, bottom section here. And that would actually be pretty nice for protection on your electronics because, like I said, the only thing you'll have up here on the top is your... Um, camera, your video transmitter, and your receiver for your uh, transmitter. So here's one of the included four inch propellers. And you can see this is going to uh, fit in here just fine. If you had, <laughs> it's not gonna hit this. It's just really low here. But with your motor up here, it's gonna spin pretty freely above that um, tail light and it, should, it shouldn't hit anything. You're not gonna be able to run five inch props. Here's five inch and there is just too long. So you're kind of stuck with four inch props on this, but that's kind of typical for a 180 size frame. One particular reason I kind of like this frame is because it's plastic and it kind of reminds me of my FPV 250. This was one of the first quad covers that I ever built and it was uh, cheap. That was the reason I bought it. The uh, plastic frame that it has here was like $10 and the little cage to go on top was another $10. And this one is also injected plastic. Now I've never broken one of these frames. I have seen them break, but this one's actually taken a lot of abuse and it's actually uh, been in a few of my older videos. But I'm kind of partial to these plastic frames just because I had such good luck with this one. So I have my battery strap up here on the top and it has the little holders here for it. It also has the holders on the bottom if you wanted to run your battery off the bottom. I just like mine up on the top the way it flies. 
Anyway, this is the King Kong 188 frame. Uh, I think this would be a pretty good first flyer frame just because I think these arms and this body is strong enough that it's not going to break in a crash. It'll have a little bit of flex to it. And I think they're, uh, they're decent enough and uh, large enough that they're not actually going to break or snap off too easily. Now, the only problem with plastic is it gets a little, cold, a little bit weaker in the cold weather, so you just have to be aware of that. Don't fly in the snow with this, or at least don't crash in the snow with this. Anyway, this is a King Kong 188 frame. If you have any questions about this, leave them in the comments, and I'll try to help you out as best I can. And as always, thanks for watching.